everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Cordero and this is my first demonstration ever. So I'm really excited and uh, really appreciative to be invited to do this. Um, and I've been a florist for a while um, and now I've turned to floral art and I'm learning a lot more about flowers and how to interpret flowers in a more artistic fashion. Um, it scares me in the beginning because there are so many rules with floral art and I started doing floristry because it was a uh, hobby and it was a thing that I didn't have to think about. I was working in the corporate world and I wanted something where I didn't have to, I was free to do whatever I wanted and to express myself. Um, and so it stopped me from doing floral art for quite some time because I thought there are so many rules it is so complicated and I don't think I'll ever get it. So I am actually getting out of my comfort zone to do this and um, I am learning more that rules in floral art actually give you further freedom and it gives you a better understanding of what, uh, why you do certain things in floral art. Uh, my uh, design today is based on natural wonders and I've chosen the Great Barrier Reef which is one of the most significant natural wonders in the world. Um, it is 3,000 kilometres long, it's the size of Germany and it is an, an incredible ecosystem. Uh, it is under great threat at the moment with global warming, with temperatures rising. Uh, a lot of pollution and uh, also uh, it has uh, things like the crown of uh, thorn starfish which are actually eating into the coral so when I looked at this I thought really coral is the city of the sea it is this it they are the architects that create forms and shapes uh, like we do on land in buildings and around around the country. So I am basing my ideas around that. So if we can start, I've what I've tried to do is I've tried to work with forms and colour. So um, I've created a, a floral foam uh, container and I've skewered all the oasis in and I've tr tried to shape it in a way so that Basically, it will be a design that will be uh, viewed from all sides um, and hopefully it will give you a sense of what, how complex a coral reef is. So I'm going to start placing a few things in position. Uh, I have a shell which I'm going to place. And I have some wattle which is the spiky wattle which gives the effect of um, something that you'd see underwater and I've got some sponge which I'm going to put into position What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create some landmarks which I'm going to start placing the flowers around. So uh, I've got some beautiful dried blushing bride which gives the sense of coral. So uh, I've, I've dried this over time because uh, they weren't needed for a wedding and I will place them in. going to group them. And then I've got some Brasilia which I've dried as well which looks very much like something you'd see under the water. some 
drive material here as well, which gives the height. I've got some dried uh, phyllos here as well, which gives that nice movement, as if it's been uh, blown by the water. some coral, some black coral. And I've got some little pieces of wood. looking around for flowers that had interesting forms. I went for things which had a strong architectural look. system of a coral reef is a lot of different organisms living together in one uh, environment. This is some poppy, dried poppy cone. Scabiosa. Celosia. This is a beautiful colour. Looks very much like coral. Have 
Barrier Reef? No, I've never been to the Barrier Reef. It's a place I would like to go to. Um, it's supposed to be amazing. Everyone who's been says how wonderful it is. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to group these things together so that they they give a sense of community and uh, that they're all living in harmony in this environment. I thought uh, the chrysanthemums grouped together would give the sense of uh, coral, a different type of coral. Starfish. Yes. <laughs> in red and uh, I think there's, there is a white and a pink I've got some tricks here so many beautiful varieties of chrysanthemums around at the moment. Um, and we have a really good chrysanthemum grower in Sydney uh, and it's very supported. Yes. Do you sketch or design 
I did. With the colour faces? Um, yes. Although some of the flowers I got weren't um, the ones I envisaged. So. into flowers. Um, I, I, uh, I got the opportunity to work with my partner at uh, Curzon Hall, which is a big um, wedding reception place in Sydney. And we used to do all the weddings on the weekend. We, they, we could have up to 12 weddings on a weekend. And uh, it was when I learnt a little bit about flowers and it meant getting up early in the morning at four o'clock and, uh, you know, buying masses of flowers and then taking them back to the studio and cutting them and then getting them ready for arrangements and things like that. So it was a very interesting journey. Um, and from that, it led to a few other things. And then I started to take an interest in it and part of the job was to do some um, offices in the city and so I used to take a big box of flowers with me and I used to go and decorate uh, a law firm in the city so that was uh, my introduction to floristry um, and I've loved it ever since. Uh, I love the creative side of it um, I'm not so keen about shop work, but uh, I think floral art really has a, its place in commercial floristry as well, because people are looking for very different things now. Uh, and it's, they're looking for variety, and if you can specialize and do some really interesting work, uh, it blends in very well with, um, with commercial floristry. When you look at the coral reef, you realise how many different colours, varieties, textures and shapes they have. So uh, it's really quite interesting um, what nature produces. And in many ways, we, we try and emulate that um, in our design of uh, good design in uh, all sorts of industries. So it is lovely to work with uh, fresh materials some beautiful kangaroo paw here, which I'm going to cut very short to try and get the sense of uh, creatures looking for feed in the water. exactly what it is. I think it's some sort of grevillea, again from Craig, but it gives that effect of uh, being under the sea. It's got a, a nautical look about it.
rosemary, which too I think gives a sense of something that might grow under water. Beautiful smoke bush leaves too, which are really pretty. I've got these beautiful um, zucchini flowers which I feel look very organic and they look like they're about to burst open with flowers with a, and ready for attracting fish and uh, just be beautiful to look at. So these are one thing I've discovered at the markets which I really love using and I've used them a lot. They don't last a great deal of time, however, they look stunning in I don't. Okay, you no, no. I, if, if you have any advice you can give me on how to use them. But they really look beautiful. I've used them several times. And I think the grower would be very keen uh, if other people would use them because they, they really are stunning. But I find that um, generally, particularly in water, they will, they will hold their own. I'm actually putting them in our oasis this time, but um, if you put them in water, they'll last, you know, for at least a two or three days. I mean, of course, it depends on the uh, weather and the air conditioning. Because, um, our weather is so unpredictable. It's been seasonally cool here this year. But, you know, sometimes you can do a wedding even in uh, April and it is so hot. And then sometimes you can do a wedding in November and it's quite cool, which, you know, it's all haywire at the moment, which s signifies how uh, the climate is changing so dramatically and it's really affecting uh, the coral reef. And it is such a shame that we're allowing it to happen. Um, so this is my way of bringing attention to the coral reef and the, the plight that's happening there. Putting them in water, I usually cut the ends off like that and I put them in water and they'll last really well. beautiful hydrangea as well which to me gives that um, look of coral the clusters together 
together work really well. Gives that vibrant look. I'm sure that sometimes um, in the photographs of the Barrier Reef they uh, use colour enhancement because um, I've been told that the reef is not as vibrant as it used to be or the areas where tourists go uh, has been corally bleached quite badly. So. Today has affected some of the uh, hydrangea, unfortunately. But there are still some bits here I can use. I think one of the interesting things out of COVID is that a lot of people are sh showing their work online, and there's some great ways of learning new techniques from all around the world um, on YouTube and things like that, which is really good because, particularly when you live in Australia. Um, you're so far from everything and if you don't have the opportunity to travel overseas um, it's a great opportunity for us to learn new techniques which is great and I think out of every adversity new things come to the fore and working from home using zoom etc is extending the friendship um, around the world and so we're getting in touch with people around the world that we wouldn't normally um, be in touch with and learning new things, which is fabulous. Um, there's so much uh, to learn out there. And every, it's very interesting how different people use flowers. And um, it, I always love being a learner and um, seeing what other people do. And while I don't, like to copy. I certainly like to take techniques that people have shown me and try and put it into practice. And we're very lucky in New South Wales that we have uh, two really good floral art groups and they really promote um, you know, floral art in a very positive way. And it's very congenial, everyone is very helpful. Uh, and that certainly makes it a, a joy to come to a meeting or a, or a workshop or a weekend and I'm hoping that uh, you're all enjoying uh, the Mitigon weekend this week, even though it's virtual. different ways and it dries beautifully as well. I think I'm about done here. So this is my homage to the floral, uh, the coral reef. Thank you.